already know the security crisis in Nigeria also. Almost every region mm -hmm. is battling some groups, taking small arms and ammunition, and dis disturbing the peace. Uh, from your insights into the Afghan war, what is the Nigerian government not doing right in the fight against insurgency and banditry and kidnapping, which has gone on for more than 10 years? You know, the, the issue of insecure, I mean, I've always, I've always said it's insecurity is number one problem in Nigeria has always been the number one problem. And, and until the, everyone takes it seriously, I don't think they've actually understand the, uh, to what extent insecurity has actually ravaged this country. Uh, you know, if this con continuously, as I, as I mentioned earlier, the threat assessment globally is showing that uh, in terrorism, as we know it, and extremism has moved away from Southwest Asia and now as headquartered in Africa. No, I mean, of course, we see what's going on in the northeastern part of Nigeria and other parts in Mali, in Cameroon, Niger, and all other areas. And so those things, if Nigeria don't push back on this, it will continue to ravage the country. With Earthmen killing and whatnot, these are just the beginnings of it. Uh, all this banditry and the use of ransom, they are using this money to actually funnel their network. If all these network are not broken and all this banditry are not pretty much sabotaged and pretty much caught right and nip in the butt at this moment, Nigeria is gonna wake up one morning and realize that their country has been pretty much taken over by extremism. So this is not something that I'm not the prophet of doom telling Nigeria that this is what's gonna happen. I'm saying that if this thing is not properly taken care of, Nigeria could be actually possibly ended up like Afghanistan, whereby the extreme extremist organization will take over the country. I'm, I mean, there's so many meetings, there's so many parts to it for it to actually take a food all in Nigeria, but the pattern remains the same. The ammo remains the same, banditry, kidnapping, using of ransom money to funnel weapons and to do all these kind of atrocities is the same ammo. It's just a different location and different geographical point. But the same thing, I believe the same end state is, is is damning to happen in Nigeria if Nigeria is not properly, if these things are not uh, taken care of. I think what Nigerian government needs to do is to form a coalition with other countries that are involved in this kind of, uh, that they have this kind of extreme organization within their borders and start looking for ways to coordinate. I know this has been done before, but we need to invite people as well that have been part of this, that understands this concept of extremism and banditry and able to help you using the lesson learned to be able to combat it. Uh, you, you rightly point out, you know, the similarities, you know, between, you know, the war in Afghanistan and what is currently happening in Nigeria. And you're right when you say, if not nip in the bud, it could degenerate into something even more serious, especially as regards the Afghan war. Um, now, yeah, and you're also right, you know, when you say, you know, those terrorist groups have headquartered here in Africa. I do remember a U.S., um, a U.S. military official saying that, you know, the, the problem with insurgency in Nigeria and especially in West Africa has actually gone beyond, you know, this region. But um, mm -hmm. international support, logistics, training, military, and yet we're still in this position because I remember the early time, early part of the insurgency, you know, um, there was a lot of support coming from the outside. But 10 years later, Anyone listening outside of Nigeria will think that things are a lot worse, you know, than they currently are. So how can then the country change the narrative? How can we, you know, change things on the ground yeah. with practical steps apart from just, you know, forming coalitions with different countries who are also experiencing the same thing? I'm I, I will tell you a story. I don't know if I've shared this with you before, uh, but uh, in 2008, Nigerian government actually invited the U.S. Pentagon to help them in the upcoming insurgency. At that particular point in time, Nigeria knew of Boko Haram, no, not known to the, the whole country by then, and they actually solicited for help. And fortunately, I was part of the crew that was sent to Nigeria to help, and we built a joint task force over there, train Nigerian on counterterrorism. And uh, they were, I mean, it was great. Americans supposed to have supported Nigeria with about $16 million of equipment and training. We brought our own airplane to train Nigerian soldiers. I was part of it. It's not like he said, she said. I was first down in Jaji, cantonment training and whatnot. But, and then when we left, we during the selection process, the Navy SEAL came back to continue the training because terrorism at that particular point in time was no no for America. Any country that wants our support, we supported them. Lo and behold, a year or two down the road, I understand the Nigerian government can't the uh, can't the uh, the tax force believing that this tax force is too dangerous. They can overthrow the government or whatnot. I don't know what their reasons were, uh, but lo and behold, when they can't the old thing and the old insurgency started full full gear from there on. Nigeria has to be actually honest with them. 
to themselves? Do they really want this thing to end? Because a lot of offers and help have been given to Nigeria. And Nigeria has a capability and the capacity to actually make this thing in the board. What would you suggest? Uh, like I said, uh, <laughs> Nigeria, I mean, I, I believe Nigeria reach out to any other countries that have been part of this before, because nobody wants actually a terrorism to, Nigeria is an equal partner of the, the West and the East. If they reach out like we can, Nigeria hasn't, like you, like you rightfully mentioned, all these assistance that Nigerians have received over the past few years, a lot of these assistance or the country that have assisted have left because Nigeria has not been fully honest with itself of what their role is in this whole process. Like, Food for thought there, Major Adeleke. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us on Afghanistan and, of course, the security situation in your country, sorry, in your uh, uh, country of origin, Nigeria. Thank you so much for speaking with us, and um, we, we're glad to have you. It's been a pleasure speaking with you, and we'll be reaching out to you, of course, for some more of your thoughts on the situation in the country. Thank you so much, Amrachi. It's always been a pleasure.